Hello, I'm Lisa Burkhart Worley, and welcome to Pop Talk, the show where you never know what topics might pop up. Well, in 2017, almost 20 million people over the age of 12 struggled with addictions. And according to the American Addiction Center, one out of eight adults dealt with both alcohol and drug addictions simultaneously. Well, this causes a problem in marriages and families if it is a loved one who has the addiction. So today we're gonna talk with uh, a friend of ours who has some experience in this, and she will provide some practical and spiritual advice and ways to deal with loved ones who have addictions. But first, let me introduce my Pop Talk co-host today. First of all, my very immediate right is Rosemary Legrand. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and we have a guest host today. I'm so excited. She is a very good friend of ours. Her name is Jen Gotson. Jen, <laughs> let me just tell a little bit about Jen before we get into the show. You may have seen her on the big screen. She probably looks familiar to, your, to you. She's a multi-award winning actress who's appeared in over 30 movies and two Oscar-nominated films, and she is the creator of the family franchise, the um, Amazon best-selling Christmas movie, The Farmer and the Bell. I've seen it three times, maybe four. It is amazing. It never gets old. You have to watch it. And it's releasing on Peacock this Christmas. And she also has a film called Forgiven. I saw her in that one, and she, was, she should have gotten an Academy Award for that one. That was amazing. And it's trending on Netflix. And uh, our guest today now is a, a good friend of mine. Her name is Destiny Yarbrough. She is here in Dallas visiting from the Atlanta area. We were both involved in a conference for Christian women in media. And uh, we met through Christian women in media, Destiny, and we just immediately clicked and we just had this great conference. So if we seem a little bit tired, that's probably because <laughs> we have been going nonstop with this conference in Fort Worth, Texas. Let me tell you about Destiny. Destiny is the founder and publisher of Salt and Light Christian Lifestyle Magazine. The magazine's purpose is to touch, move, and inspire readers through the Word of God. She's also an ordained minister with a passion for deliverance. That's what we're really talking about today and uh, providing hope to women. Yeah. She shares her message through her book, Visions, Dreams, and Destiny. God has called you to be a visionary. That sounds so interesting. However, Destiny's best known for her Christian TV talk show. It's called Destiny X, making a difference for the next generation. She really cares about the next generation. It's a Christian talk show dedicated to encourage and inspire that next generation. So welcome to Pop Talk, oh, Destiny. Thank you for having me. I just me. love you so much and so love glad you. That Honored you to be here. here with us today. And uh, we came up with a topic because, I, uh, like many people, you can talk about a lot of things, but you've had experience in this, and we thought it was such a good topic uh, to discuss healing from toxic relationships, primarily uh, toxic because of addiction in the yes. family. So you have lived with loved ones who have addictions, and why do you think so many people struggle with them? You know, a lot of addiction is rooted. It's rooted. A lot of it comes from childhood. Maybe something happened, they never got healed from it, they never got to the root, so they medicate to cover the pain. I mean, really, that's a lot of it in a nutshell. Oh, gosh. And yeah. My, uh, my husband has come out of a long-term cocaine mm. and alcohol addiction. Yeah, praise God. And s Praise God. Yes. And so being able to visit with you and hear your story you're gonna impact so many people. So let's talk about Amen. it. You've been in two marriages yes. that have had addictions. Your current husband is going through it. And what's so sad is that your son's father yes. is no longer here. Right, right, yeah. Because of it. Yes. Can you share with us? Yeah, you know, um, my son's biological father struggled with addiction and same thing cocaine was his drug of choice and alcohol and it just got progressively worse and uh he never got well i mean i fasted i prayed i stood in the gap i had so many people praying for him i did everything that we're supposed to do as a christian wife and i don't believe in divorce i didn't want a divorce but he never was 
I had nothing, I, I got to a place where I had nothing to work with. And God doesn't want us in that bondage. So any women out there that are just staying in the marriage, you know, God doesn't want us in bondage. So several things had occurred and the Lord basically said, I'm releasing you. He lined everything up, the attorney, my son was, you know, protected during that time. He was in a Christian school. He was able to stay in his school with a scholarship. That is nothing but the Lord. Wow. And just so many things that I could share that supernaturally um, God provided for us. And he protected us during all that. So later on in life, God showed me a revelation. I get a lot of revelations from the Lord. And he said, now you see all these years later, he never got well. Mm -hmm. So I would have been in that toxic relationship and that would have really affected my son's future. My son is the man he is today because God protected him. And he's the one breaking the generational curse off the bloodline. Yeah. And I, I wanted to say that uh, he does see the future. You know, we may not see the future. Yeah. But God sees the future. And sometimes we get upset. It's like, why aren't my prayers working? Why isn't something happening? But God sees the future. And he, uh, like you said, he was protecting you. And we don't condone divorce. We no. don't. But sometimes this is, uh, he knows the heart. He yeah. sees the heart. And he knew that it wasn't going to get better. And, and he saw what had to happen for your son's Right. Son. Yeah. Wow. Right. So, you know, oh, I was go just going to say, fast forwarding, I remarried. And I know we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But he, there's a difference in recovery, recovering, and recovered. And when you're recovering, you're in that ring. And when you get around those familiar spirits, it pulls you back. But when you're recovered, you don't want to go back. You don't want that familiarity. You want to just keep moving and pressing forward in the things that God's calling you to. So I want to share that because that was very powerful when I got that revelation. I love the ring. Yes. Yeah. Recovering. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Destiny, um, I, I too was in a similar situation to what we're talking about right now. Um, when our loved ones are alcoholics, you know, when they're not drinking, yeah. they're, I mean, absolutely beautiful people. But when they are drinking, whether, they are alco whether it's alcohol or drug addiction, you know, they can be verbally abusive physically, mentally, mm. you know, because as you said, you know, it, uh, it's a sickness, it's a disease, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, what would, what should a husband or wife do in a situation like that, you know, to help them in that particular toxic environment? Absolutely. That's a great question. You know, so many people are what we call codependent. I mean, I can tell you, I have my little tool belt all about addiction. And if we could reach in our little tool belt and pull everything out, you know, we have what's called the bottle family. And the bottle family is like this, and they pull you down. You know, addiction's like a rattlesnake. You know how it's just really quiet and still, and then it strikes? Mm. That's really how addiction works. Until that person battling with the addiction wants to get help, there's really not a lot you can do because you can't, when you go to really good Christ-based recovery centers, they will not take someone if the wife is calling on behalf of the husband. Mm -hmm. The husband has to want it or the wife, whoever's battling with the addiction. And until you, A, I don't believe in just ordinary recovery centers. I believe they have to be Christ-based. Oh, yeah. Until you get into that space and they want it, you just, no matter how hard you pray, no matter what happens, until they make that choice to want it, it's going to be the bottle family where it's just a downward spiral. And you have to love from a distance. We call that detaching, detachment, and it's called tough love. Because a lot of times we make it worse for the addict because we're enabling them when we just lie for them, cover up for them. When we detach, we love them from a distance that can start the process for them wanting their healing to get better. Mm -hmm. You can't lower your standard. You got to keep yes. that standard, uh, if, especially if you're a believer and you're, you're trying to live that life. If you start doing that, lying for them and covering it up and making excuses or whatever, then you're really not, you're, you're really uh, lowering the standard of, of living a holy and godly life, I yes. would say. 
And so, but we don't want to stop praying for them. Actually, a great prayer is uh, you pray for them to want to help themselves. You pray for them to want to go in addic to an addiction recovery center. I, let me just ask you, Jen, you, you've dealt with this kind of thing. Is that what, what you were doing? Were you praying? Or was this person out of it by the time? Um, oh, so, so it's a Jim. Okay, I didn't know. Jim, I, just, yeah, I know, I know. He's open with his story. He shares yes. it all the time on set. Okay. Yeah, he was in a crack cocaine addiction for a very long time. And two years before we met, he went through a Christ-centered, freedom counseling, yeah. David Burris, transformation. Then he had an addiction to tobacco, and the Holy Spirit said, you cannot marry him until that addiction's broken. Amen. To break the cycle generationally. That's good. And David said, you pray for 40 days and you fast. And if he doesn't break it, you give the ring back. And that's what we did. And God then broke that, and Jim felt the freedom to surrender, to say, God, I give it to you. Yes. And all of the rehabilitation that he learned for transformation of his mind from Scripture, he was finally free. And now he celebrates. It's either eight or nine years of victorious. Amen. Amen. Oh, gosh, Amen. I've got to chill on that. And, Amen. And I've met Jim, your <laughs> husband, and it's beautiful that we're able to bring this out as well oh, today because Jim is a beautiful man, and he's a great husband, a great daddy, and an excellent actor. So you all have to watch them in The Farmer and the Bell because they play uh, like love interests and uh, they are the, it's like fireworks. You want to see that. So I'm just so glad for you. <laughs> Thank just you. so thankful awesome. for you because you just have you're such a beautiful family. And that's what happens when, right, Destiny? When, yes. when we see when people yes. are recovered because they can have the life that you just desired for them yes. and they, they yeah. have freedom and, and it's, it's just a whole different ball game and, and they don't have to rely on this stuff to have happiness. Because it affects the whole family. It does. Yeah. It affects everyone. Well, I did uh, look up some information from a Christ-centered healing facility. It's called Healing Springs Ranch and it's an addiction treatment facility in Tioga, Texas. And, and what I found that there can be mental, emotional, and even spiritual changes with alcoholics, uh, but it could be the same for drug addiction. And one of the signs is that the uh, addict denies that they have a problem, right? Or they may have a lack of interest in things that they used mm -hmm. to enjoy doing. So that has to be difficult for a spouse. It's like, let's go to so-and-so's house. No, no, I don't feel like it. How do you deal with a loved one, Destiny, who's in denial about their problem? Mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where I was getting to. When, if they don't want to get to the root, they're going to be in denial. And getting to the root means getting to that place of healing. Because first comes the deliverance. They have to get delivered and set free and want it. Second comes the healing. They've got to get that space, that place in their heart healed. Maybe they were molested as a child. Maybe something happened. You know, that's just one example. And then finally is the hope. Because there's hope out there for families dealing. Jen's a prime example with her family. Yeah, yeah so you got to something there. I just want to just to talk about just for a minute. It's there's a root. It's not just that they decided one day that they're going to take cocaine yeah. or that they're going to drink, over drink. You know, when I was in college, I will admit, I, I drank pretty heavily in college, and, but I was trying to be one of the group, you know. You were a party girl. I was a party girl, and I don't, I'm not proud of that. Right, right, right. But guess what? I wasn't an addict because when I, when I, was at, when I started to get towards my senior year, I just cut it off. I quit drinking like I, I, I wasn't an addict because I, I had pain in my childhood, but I felt like, you know, I had, had gotten through it. And so that you, I want to talk about the root, you yeah. know, there's, if someone in your family is struggling with that kind of alcoholism, there's, that's the, that's you got, what you got to get to. Yes. And if you know about it, then maybe that, that wound needs to be opened up so it can heal. Is that right, Dustin? It is. You know, we have what's called inner healing. Mm -hmm. And inner healing is getting to that root. It takes you back. It's like we work, people work on their houses. Mm. And it takes you back to the age of three years old. Mm. Then you go to the age of five years old. Then you go to the age of 10 years old. Then you go to 13. And then you go to your 20s and then your 30s. And it takes you back and you've got to work on your houses to see what was that root. Because some people may not even know it. Somebody could say, well, you know, I didn't get asked to the dance when I was, you know, in eighth grade. Then you have that root of rejection. Mm -hmm. And you carry it in your adult life and don't even realize that it's there. That's just an example. Right. 
So um, that's a great question. You've just, you've got to get to the root. That's really with anything. Right. Our behavior. Yes. Sometimes we have, uh, it may not even be an addiction. It could be some kind of weird behavior. Something I know, I still struggle with. Triggers. 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 triggers, yeah. We all have triggers and probably we all do sitting here still. Uh, but we're we're a work in process, right? Yes. God continues to work on us until the day of completion. Hallelujah. I'm, I could go on. <laughs> and you know, Lisa, you have to go through to get to. Yeah. Because we go from glory to glory to glory. God wants to take us higher and higher and higher. But it's what we do with that. And at the end of the day, it comes down to choices. Mm. What choices are we going to make? Because our choices affect our future. I tell my son, he just turned 21, the people you surround yourself will affect your future. Amen. Amen. And, and let's, let's just, uh, let's unpack choices. Yes. So one of the ways that people are able to find freedom with addiction is the 12-step program, Alcohol Anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the effectivity of when they talk about going to a higher power of how the 12-step program might help someone? If I can be honestly transparent here, we want you to be transparent. I do not believe in the 12-step program. That's just my personal. I think that everything has to be Christ-centered. Hallelujah. Um, and I understand their wording with higher power and what have you, but God is the ultimate healer. He is the ultimate deliverer. He, he, can, he can deliver somebody in the snap of a finger that has been addicted to cocaine for 25 years. That is our miracle working God, and that's the power uh, there is no power in a 12-step program. Mm. If God's not in the center of it, I don't believe it's going to be as effective. That's just my personal opinion. Well, they might say the higher power, though, is God. I mean, but it's not in your face. Be God. Right. Yeah, not in your face. Until we say the name of Jesus, right. mm. the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is what transforms lives. And, you know, if you're around people that can't even say Jesus out of their mouth, there's a lot of demonic comes with addiction mm. because it's pharmacia and a lot of it is witchcraft. And we have to be careful because one thing will open the door to another. When you mm. talked about the tobacco, tobacco can open the door to alcohol. Alcohol can open the door to pornography. Then you got the water spirits that you're dealing with in a household because you're opening those portals and it's demonic. And people don't realize how really deep this addiction goes into. Yeah. We had a friend uh, that was an alcoholic and it's been a few years now, but he was possessed and uh, literally they, they did, he was Catholic. They did an exorcism at the church. He spoke. I mean, we, we heard from his brother. Wow. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. And, uh, and he died from it Wow! because it's going to get you, you know, if you don't renounce it. Spencer's father ended up passing away. Yeah. Wow. From it. He ended up drinking himself <sighs> to death. He never got well. Mm. I, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, Go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to ask a question. I was saying your own, your own husband left the marriage after 10 years. Yes. And I know destiny, it was so difficult for you. But did you get to a place in your, in your life when you realized that there was nothing you could do for him anymore? Mm. You know, I saw it. I, I, I saw it. And I kept saying, and it was a familiar spirit that came into the workspace. It was a, 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 a boss, a, a leader that he was working under that was inviting him to go to these concerts. And I'm like, that's the last place you need to be is going into these types of environments when you are, had, when you come out of that, you don't wanna go back into that because it does open the door for other things. Um, he continued just doing, you know, what he was doing and making those choices and, Sometimes, you know, there's not a lot we can do. If, if you don't have a lot to work with, you just really have to get to that place of trust. As I know in your, your segment, before this segment, trust is really, at the end of the day, we have to trust the Lord in everything because the, He orders our steps. I've been friends with you for a little while now, and we've gotten very close, and we've talked about your, your marriage that ended and um, I know you still love him. I mean, you, you, it's hard sometimes. Sometimes, even though you love somebody, the best thing you can do is to, to let them go because it's not, you're not helping them right. you know, by maybe staying in the marriage and, and, and allowing this addiction to continue. How have you, experience, have, how have you experienced healing yourself 
uh, by maybe putting a little separation uh, between yeah. you and, and your husband? That's a, That's a question. great question, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, did, I do a lot of praying. I, I, I have a relationship with the Lord. You know, there's a difference in relationship and just going to church and going in the motions. Um, I had to really give it to God. And I said, Lord, I give you my marriage. I give you him. I give you the situation. And I just had to, you know, take, take, take it all, Lord. I had to just give it to him. And I have to just trust the process. But I have to keep moving forward. So whoever I'm speaking to, to today, you have to keep pressing forward. You cannot go back. And don't allow your past to create your future. Because a lot of people do that. And that's where they... That's that familiar, familiar spirits. You know, it's true. They will, it's, it's, it's factual. They will start backing up and going back into that old behavior. Yeah, the, the battle, is, we've got a little time, so I want to talk about this. The battle is in the spiritual realm, right, Destiny? Yes. Uh, we're not fighting this like, well, come on, shake out of it, you know. Yeah. Why are you doing this? You can't fight it in your own mm. power. You've got you've to go to the Lord and, and yeah. just fight this battle in the spiritual realm about uh, realm and rebuke these yeah. demons rebuke this yes. spirit that's taken over whether it's your husband or your child or your sister or your brother isn't that right Destiny? yeah you know I, I anoint my house all the time I would anoint his shoes I would anoint the clothing I would pray over things you know when he's you know, when he steps out the door, Lord, just let him make good choices. Let him make the right choices. Mm -hmm. But you're right. You have to be very alert. You have to know the signs and the signals of addiction. And a lot of it is in the behavior because it is, I'm sure you experience it. It's like a roller coaster. They're up and down. You know, the, the, the dopamine, you know, it's, it's all in the brain and there's triggers. And you have to just be alert. You have to have your eyes open and... Those tools, I'm telling you, inner healing, that helped me a lot. I went through inner healing, not once, but I've gone through it three times. I've, I've actually taught inner healing to help other women. So talk about that for a minute. How can you heal in, inside? I mean, can you just give us a few ideas yeah. of how that can happen? Yeah. So with healing, healing is a process, first of all. It's not going to be overnight, and it's a process. And if you trust the Lord, you pray. You know, I praised through that season of my life. I, I praised God. I got on my knees. I, I, I put my worship music on. And, you know, the enemy doesn't know what to do. It startles the enemy because they want us to be in a place of brokenness and beat down, busted and disgusted. Mm -hmm. But God has called us. You know, my favorite scripture, everyone that knows me knows it's John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But God comes to give the abundant life. And so with that process of healing, it's not going to happen overnight. But that's where the trust comes in. That's where you have to stay grounded. You have to stay anchored in the Lord. You've got to stay in the Word. And, you know, His Word is truth. You know, God can't lie. And the enemy, you know, He's the father of lies. How I, important? Well, go ahead. I have, I have a question about practical steps on breaking, practical steps on breaking codependency. Um, when Jim was going through the tobacco addiction, mm -hmm. which is so, feels minor compared to anything else, but it's a gateway. I saw the courtroom and I saw Jesus and I saw the enemy shackling him and I prayed for those shackles to come off and then I visualized that Jesus was there healing those shackles and then Jim was taken to a recovering room to be able to be healed and so I was visually praying into the space of breaking strongholds um, and out of it, the 40 day fast, this is where the farmer and the bell sprout. Mm -hmm. So applications of codependency, if I stayed in that relationship, the ministry that God called on our life would have never blossomed. That's right. The enemy <gasps> wanted to block that. How do right. you break people from codependency? Let me tell you something. That was prophetic what you just spoke because we have to go into the courts of heaven. We have that authority and we have the authority to break those generational curses, to break those generational things. We go into the courtroom of heaven. God is the judge. And let me tell you, with that question, you have got to just... You've got to get to a place of where it's you and God and you're standing in the gap for that person and you've got people interceding and praying on behalf of that situation. But um, 
how does a woman leave with a family for tough yeah, times? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You know, women that don't have jobs are in a bad space. Thank God I had my career. Um, you've got to get a plan. You've got to get a plan in place. There's people out there that can help. There's resources that can help you. There's people that, um, there's shelters for families that are battling with this. But you just, you've got to get a plan in place. You know, thank God for my family and my friends, my mother and my son, you know. Um, that's what really got me through. I had an amazing church family. Get in a Bible-based church with people that can really help you. I wonder if wow. people Google shelter for abused women. Maybe that's a way for them to get a contact and then just have the courage yeah. to, to go. And even if they're not abused, you know, there was no abuse in mind. There was Addiction verbal. Emotional yes, verbal abuse. Yes, yes, because the whole physical. yeah, because the whole family is affected by yeah. it. I mean, I remember when my son was little, he said, "Mommy, is Daddy at that nasty bar?" Mm. And I was like, "Whoa!" And um, I mean, kids are very in tune, and as parents, we have to protect our children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank God that God protected Spencer because there's a call on his life. And he's the one that's going to be bringing the generational blessings Hallelujah. and breaking that generational that's curse. Right. He doesn't even like. Yeah. You can see the light over him. You yeah. You the photo today. Yeah. That was like, blessed. Awesome. But, you know, Destiny, do you think sometimes a man and a woman, you know, that are, that are actually living with the, the alcoholic person, do they think it's their fault? It's yes, cold. yes, mm. yes. The enemy put that on me. Exactly. He said, oh, it's your fault. If you would have done this, if you would have done that. And it has, n and thank God that I have a relationship with the Father because he gave me revelation. It has nothing to do with you, Destiny. It has to do with what happened in his childhood at 12 years old. And God spoke to me. He said, ask him what happened. Mm. Ask him what happened. And this is in my book. And I was like, what? And I was just sitting there and he goes, ask him what happened. And I said, and this was after he was already moved out of the house and we were already on the pro in the divorce process. I said, what happened to you when you were a child? And he looked at me like, what? And that, the Holy Spirit told me to ask. Mm. And, and I, he, he had opened up and told me that his oldest brother had abused all of them mm -hmm. when they were all That's little boys. It is. That was the root that we were mm -hmm. talking That's about. It had to get to the root. Well, Destiny, thanks so much for sharing about this very important topic. You're doing great work for the kingdom, and thanks. I'm just so blessed to know you. My honor. And we're going to be doing some projects together. We've done some already, but yeah. we're going to be going to Israel. We're going to be taping there and doing a special over there yes. in Israel. So I can't wait. That's coming up next year. So to come. <laughs> it's going to come. And so we'd love for you to reach out to us. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Let's do that one more time. I didn't give her information. Sure, no worries. After okay. you talk about Israel, do you want me to talk about our information and then rally yes, you back? Yes, we can do that. Okay. okay. Yeah, just go right into Real quick, it. real quick. All right. Well, thanks so much, Destiny, for uh, sharing about yes. such an important topic here on Pop Talk. Uh, we're just so blessed to know you, and you're doing great work for the kingdom. And you and I have done some projects together, and we have another project coming up next year mm -hmm. in Israel. Yes. So I'm very excited about what's going to come out of that. And we're going to have a it's little special that's going to... To, uh, air it on hopefully multiple platforms. Yes. Yeah, and probably on your award-winning television show, <laughs> Destiny X Talk Show, and in your magazine, Salt and Light Christian Lifestyle, and all the books that you write. We just love you, Destiny. Love you. And God. you can reach Destiny at destinyx.tv. Destinyx.tv. And we'd love for you to reach out to us here at Pearls of Promise Ministries. You can email us at info at pearlsofpromiseministries.com. You can like us on Facebook. We'd love to have another like from you, and you can contact us there. And you can also uh, follow us on Twitter at Pop Talk Media, and we're on Instagram at pop underscore ministries. And thanks to all of our 12 television platforms like Covenant Daughters, Network, Kings Television, and Overcomers TV. We're also grateful for our radio networks, Christian Mix 106, WPIL Radio in Alabama and Georgia, and the Fishbowl Radio Network. And we're grateful for our production company, Grace Point Media. For all of your media needs, go to gracepoint.media. That is Pop Talk for today. We're just ordinary girls. God turned into pearls. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>